Hello boys and girls, I'm going to read to you today the Fenway Follow-Up Ballpark Mystery, Mystery Book Number 1 by David Kelly, illustrated by Mark Myers. It's baseball season, but even if you're not a fan of baseball, I'm sure you'll like these short little mysteries. The Fenway Follow-Up, The Green Monster. Watch out, Kate yelled. Boston's best batter, Big D, had just hit another rocket. The baseball was headed straight to the top of Fenway Park's left field wall, right where Kate Hopkins and her cousin Mike Walsh were standing. Yowza! Mike ducked down as the ball sailed overhead. That one is out of here. Mike and Kate watched it fly over the wall of the stadium toward the sunny city street below. They waited to hear the clunk of the ball hitting a car's hood or shattering glass as it hit a windshield. But all they heard was a loud thud and a soft thunk. No crunch, no smash of glass, no car alarms. Mike scampered up to the railing that overlooked the street. The ball bounced against the wall of a parking garage. A little girl in yellow overalls chased the ball as it rolled down the sidewalk. Ah, uh, why didn't it land near us, Mike asked. He pulled a worn tennis ball out of his fleece jacket and bounced it against the cement steps a few times. He carried a ball everywhere he went. I've always wanted a real Major League Baseball. If Big D had hit it at you, it would have knocked your head off, Kate answered. She took off her baseball cap and slipped her long brown ponytail through the hole in the back of the cap. At least then you wouldn't be able to think about baseball. It's all you do. Mike couldn't argue with that. He did spend a lot of time playing baseball and talking about it and watching it. Last year, he even started a baseball website. That was why he was so excited to be at Fenway Park watching batting practice. Kate's mom, Mrs. Hopkins, worked as a sports reporter for a popular website called American Sports. She was covering that day's baseball game between the Boston Red Sox and the Oakland A's. Kate lived with her mom in Cooperstown, New York. Mike lived down the block. His mom and Kate's mom were sisters. Mike, Kate, and Kate's mom had left at seven that morning and driven to Boston. Mrs. Hopkins was in the press room, but Mike and Kate were using their special all-access passes to explore Fenway Park. They had started at the seats on top of Fenway's giant left field wall. The 37-foot high wall was painted dark green and ran from left field to center field. It was known as the Green Monster. Mike turned his attention back to the field. Hey, watch the way Big D stands in the batter's box, Mike pointed to home plate. He has an open stance. His back foot is closer to the plate than his front foot. It's what gives him power to hit like that. Even from far away, Big D's arm muscles stood out through his uniform. He was tall and strong and always had a big grin on his face. Big D was one of Boston's most popular players. Do you see that bat he's using? Mike went on. It was a light colored wooden bat with a dark green ring dividing the handle from the barrel of the bat. It's his good luck charm, like a four leaf clover. He calls it his green monster, just like the wall. Pow! Big D hit another ball out of the park. Across the field by the Boston dugout, a small group of fans cheered. They had come early for batting practice, too. Didn't he try to use a bright green bat in a game once? Kate asked. What happened to it? Mike was the expert when it came to baseball, but Kate knew a lot about everything else. She read all the time. Books, newspapers, websites, anything she could find. Yep, but it wasn't allowed, Mike told her. According to the rules, bats have to be black, brown, or natural. So now, Big D just uses a regular bat, but he still calls it the Green Monster. After he batted, Big D headed back to the dugout. The fans crowded the railing and chanted, Big D, Big D. Big D. Big D leaned his bat against the low wall in front of the seats. He took off his hat and waved. The fans went wild. 
Many of them held out baseballs, hats, and other souvenirs for Big D. Big D started signing autographs. A photographer trailed behind him, taking pictures. He carried a long black tripod case slung over his shoulders and a camera with a big lens. I knew we should have waited over there, Mike said. We could have gotten Big D's autograph. Maybe next time, Kate said. It's cool that he's signing so many. While Big D greeted his fans, Wally, the Red Sox, big furry green mascot, came trotting down the first base line toward home plate. He waved to the people near the dugout, but then he tripped and sprawled face first on the grass. The crowd roared with laughter while Wally wriggled on the ground. Big D and the Bat Boy ran over to help Wally up. Wally took a small bow and gave the crowd a big wave without falling over. Big D patted Wally on the back and ducked back into the dugout. One Red Sox player after another practiced hitting, but Mike and Kate could tell that no one was as good as Big D. Soon Boston finished batting practice. A bat boy and a bat girl came out to collect the bats. I'd love that job, said Mike. You'd get to meet all the players, you get to watch all the games, and get paid for it. The Oakland A's took the field for their batting practice. Come on, said Kate. I told my mom we'd stop by the press room before the game starts. She's going to give us some money for lunch. Kate and Mike found their way through the hallways lined with hot dog, ice cream, and peanut stands. They rode an elevator up to the fourth floor. After showing a security guard their passes, they entered the press room. The room had huge open windows facing the infield. Hi, kids, Mrs. Hopkins said. She was sitting at a desk in front of a window. A few reporters sat on either side of her, working on computers or talking. Mike went straight to the windows. Wow, what a view, he said. You can see everything from here. It's like you're on top of the field. It is pretty amazing, said Mrs. Hopkins. Sometimes fall balls get hit up here, so you have to pay attention. Just then, a telephone rang. Kate's mother reached for it, but the reporter next to her answered it. He talked for a minute or so and then hung up. You'll never believe what just happened, he said. What? Mrs. Hopkins asked. Big D's lucky bat has been stolen. And that is the end of chapter one.